If you bless with the Spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say Amen at your giving thanks, since he does not understand what you say? 1 Corinthians 14, 16. Let's say Amen. This section of 1 Corinthians 14, along with the context surrounding it, provides a unique glimpse into some activities of the first century Christians who gathered together as local assemblies of believers. Unfortunately, in the church at Corinth, several problems had developed. One difficulty arose from the spiritual gift of tongues, languages unknown to the speaker but which could be either understood by others or else interpreted for them. The Corinthians were abusing that gift, seeking attention rather than honor in Christ. Further, this chapter explains that in a meeting of assembled Christians, it would be better to teach the word of God directly rather than bless with the spirit, that is, speak in an unknown language. More could be said about that subject, but pausing at verse 16, we find an encouraging point about the collective experience of praising the Lord. If all was in order, someone would give thanks to God audibly, and everyone else would respond with an amen. This implies that the one who prayed had expressed the thoughts of the entire gathering. After the prayer, the others, even one who was uninformed, could declare their agreement, which is the meaning of the word Amen. This beautiful aspect of meeting together is one for every Christian to enjoy. When someone leads in prayer, let's say Amen. This is for men and women, older and younger, the spiritually mature and the novice alike. Let's not remain silent or mumble a quiet amen to ourselves. If one lifts up the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord of all, let us joyfully share in that expression of praise. A hearty amen is a simple but significant way to display Christian unity before men and angels alike. Stephen Campbell